Hey, what's happening guys? What you see here are all three modes of the 555 timer. A stable, bi stable, and mono stable. And yeah, I'm sure there's somebody out there who can come up with some other esoteric mode that I haven't thought of. But these are the three main modes of the 555 timer. One of the most incredible ICs ever created. And this is probably going to be my last video on it. I've talked about it a number of times in a number of videos. So unless somebody has something specific they want me to cover, I think we've just about got it all. The data sheet for the 555 timer. And it is about 30 pages long. I mean, it's incredible. There's so much going on here. I like their applications. Fingerprint, fingerprint biometrics, iris biometrics, RFID reader. Really? That's all you could come up with? You take a look here at this data sheet, which is one by TI. You'll see it is uh, originally from September 1973, revised in 2014. But yeah, that's how old the 555 timer is. I mean, actually it was invented in 72 by a company called what was it, Signetics, Signetics or something like that, by Hans Kamenzine. And, uh, yeah, it is available in just about any package that you could be looking for. So let's talk first about the modes. Now the A-stable mode is simply an A-stable multi-vibrator form of a relaxation vibrator. I hate to call it an A-stable multi-vibrator because it doesn't really meet the Barkhausen criteria. I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows more than me who will chime in. Personally, I don't think it does, but okay. Anyway, we're simply using two resistors. In this case, they're in this um, potentiometer here to make it easier to plug into the board. And a capacitor to control the timing. A charge a discharge of the capacitor is what controls the rate. Uh, right here, we're getting, what, maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9 hertz. I specifically made it very slow so that you could see it. Now, if I pull out this capacitor, and this is a, I'll have to look and see, this is a 10 microfarad capacitor, it may look like that is on solidly, but it's not. And we'll take a look at that later. There is capacitance in the breadboard, and it's probably driving that oscillation at a rate of uh, a couple hundred kilohertz would be my guess. So this will just run, free run. It, ha it needs no input from us when it's given, you know, a complete circuit. That's all it does. Next, we have the bi-stable mode. When I ground the trigger pin, it turns on. When I ground the reset pin, it turns off. Uh, no capacitor or no resistors or capacitors are used for timing. We simply have current limiting resistors. These are 10K a piece used on the switches on the pull up and the pull down here. And then we have a bypass capacitor here. So we ground the trigger, it turns on, ground the reset, it turns off. And then finally we have the monostable mode. We ground the trigger and it comes on for a period of time which is controlled by the two resistors. I mean, actually in this case it's controlled by this resistor here and this capacitor here. So how can one chip do so many things? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. So let me get this out of the way. And we're going to bring in section 8 of the data sheet so that we can talk about this and get a better understanding. This is the internals of the 555 timer. Here's our VCC on pin 8 
and here's our ground on pin one and what you see between them are three resistors that form a voltage divider three equal value resistors which means this point in the circuit will be two-thirds VCC and this point in the circuit will be one-third VCC and that's what gives us the magic of the 555 timer then what we have here are two comparators when we reach two-thirds of VCC this comparator fires drives the output high and sets a reset latch and then we have our output driven either high or low when we reach one-third VCC this comparator fires drives its output high sets the latch and then our output goes high or low again depending on how we have it set up and then we simply have a transistor here an NPN style transistor on the discharge pin that allows us to discharge our external uh, capacitor this is brilliant it's, it's so simple what we have here one two three four five six this is this here is an op amp mainly as a buffer so where are we at one two three four five six seven eight eight components in this little chip that does so many things if you look here at section 7 our specifications you can see our absolute uh, maximum ratings it has a supply voltage of up to 18 volts I do not recommend you run it up to 18 volts I recommend you run it somewhere around 9 volts input voltage on each of these pins is up to VCC we have a storage temperature minus 65 to 150 and you see our thermal impedance and all of that good stuff there incredible so here are our recommended operating conditions a supply voltage of four and a half I'm gonna tell you right now four and a half volts is too low and a maximum of 16 volts too high I would tell you if you can run it between seven and nine volts you're going to get the best performance out in my experience our operating temperature minus 40 to 105 celsius so you know pretty wide operating temperature there again from the data sheet here also section 8 we have our mono stable schematic diagram here and that's what we've got going on over here except i have put in a switch to turn it on and off they don't have a switch so that's the only difference there but as you can see we just have uh, a resistor and a capacitor the resistor goes from VCC into pin 7 and from pin 7 to pin 6 through the capacitor and into ground so you can see right there well maybe you can see if we zoom in you can probably see it so there's our resistor going into pin 7 pin 7 goes over to pin 6 and the capacitor from pin 6 goes to ground so that's what you're seeing there and in that case when this is triggered it will stay on for a certain period of time it can be nanoseconds to hours all depending on the capacitor and the resistor beautiful right now we have our a stable mode and here you can see we're using two resistors and a capacitor to control that charge discharge time where we go from one-third to two-thirds VCC and that's this circuit here so I have the three resistors you can see here in this potentiometer package going from pin 8 to 7 to 6 there is our capacitor on pin 2 pin 4 is held high and that gives us our a stable operation which gives us pretty much a square wave and there's the formula you can figure out for your high time it is 0.693 times ra plus rb times c there's your ra your rb and your c super simple to figure it out nothing to it
have the buy stable mode in here so again I will explain that one to you quite simply when we ground pin to the trigger pin we pull our voltage divider down below one third fires one comparator and activates our output when we pull our reset pin low that resets the latch and it goes high and the output goes low that's really all there is to that now they have a couple other applications in here here is a missing pulse detector here's how you can set it up for PWM we talked about that last week I mean beautiful you can just keep going through here <laughs> and find a hundred thousand different things that you can do with this this incredible IC even though Bob Peace was known to not like it but I told you we'd take a look at this so we got the scope up and running the Rigol 1054Z but now that it comes already uh, pre up it's really an 1104 because we have the 100 megahertz uh, front end bandwidth so that's pretty nice I think okay take a look at that on the scope here you can see whoa hello come on there we go now focus on it and we're good to go all right you can see how slow that is now it says it's less than 15 that's about all it can figure out but it does tell us we have a duty cycle of 61.11 percent there again we have that one-third two-thirds thing now I'm gonna pull out that capacitor like I told you and we should have a big change here I'm just gonna hit the auto set and let the scope figure it out and we should have our result here in a second there we do and we're getting uh, 500 kilohertz kind of an ugly waveform though you definitely want to have some capacitance in there so let me uh, let me put in a small little uh, ceramic disc capacitor in here kind of fix that a little bit see how we uh, behave now what 47 kilohertz that's kind of a uh, that's kind of an ugly waveform isn't it let me grab another uh, another capacitor we gotta find we gotta find something good here Just smooth that baby out let's see what we're doing now okay there we go I replaced that capacitor with a 0.68 microfarad And if we zoom up, you can see what we got there. A, a decent square wave with a frequency of about 11 hertz. So friends, that is the beauty of the 555 timer. It can be whatever you need it to be. An A stable multi vibrator, a set reset latch, or just a timer. <laughs> Imagine that. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons and big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.